Well, here we are, back, back with a, another attempt to play this um, large 18xx 1880 China by Double O Games. Um, Helm Early and Lonnie Aldler um, have done this. There's the map of China. Oh, I've got all the tiles up over there. Um, Company charters over here, private investors there, share chart there, um, <clears throat> payout chart there, all the work permits here, all the trains grey in grey here, all the tokens there, and all the dividends here in front of us. We've got our five players, and I've already <clears throat> done the auctioning off of the private companies. So I tried to play this um, about nine, ten months ago at the start of um, what then turned into our first lockdown here in the UK. And um, that played havoc with my work, with where I was living, with um, my personal life and all the rest of it. And um, since then, gaming has been uh, quite uh, difficult, quite fractured, just because of the uncertainties going on. Every time you get into a routine, suddenly there's a new lockdown or a different tier or whatever, and everything in your life changes again. Um, so I've um, aborted, well this got aborted due to the first lockdown because I wasn't even living here and I got back and I didn't know what was going on. A game of Sicily got aborted, um, likewise, due to similar interruptions. Um, and so I've played some shorter stuff, some Bios Megafauna and some High Frontier just to keep some gaming ticking over. But I really fancy picking this up again. It was I was really enjoying it, it was such a good game. Um, I think I got about four, four or five operating rounds in, maybe, and then it, um, and then it, uh, you know, it got disrupted. So um, I'm back in with my five players. I've got um, a guy, Train Mad Tony here, uh, Balanced Bernie, Cautious Charlie, Payout Pamela, and Reckless Rachel, who has proved to be not very reckless in the um, auctions on the private companies. In fact very unreckless. What actually happened on these auctions was um, uh, because I played the game before at least half about halfway through and seen how some of these operated I could be a bit more um, aggressive in terms of bidding on them or, or at least deciding whether they were worth more or the printed value or less than the printed value or, or close to it or whatever. And so actually some the prices on these went up quite high. So the um the King Imperial King government, which gets the 20% share of the um Baocheng Railway, which starts things off, went for 200. Um and this rocket of China went for 75 against an opening price of 50. So the 275 um train man Tony paid for these two privates. And um that does uh, because he's got the least money, the the the, the players then get reordered, so he's now first player with the red train. Uh, so he gets his first um, choice of um, private investor, and then he's going to also get the pick of the bunch in terms of what he wants to um, invest in as, as companies. But with 125 left, he hasn't got enough money to start a second company, so he's going to be getting the Bao Cheng but nothing else, which means that Bernie here with 225 um, l money left is going to get um, the pick of what they want um, to open for a company and with the Yander Ferry Company it's quite likely he's going to want to open this, curry out of Sh um, this um, company out of Shanghai and is also going to get the second choice of private investor so could be in quite a strong position but still um, he paid 130 for the engineer's office and another 45 for the Yander Ferry Company. Yeah, that would be right. That would be 175, 225 left. So again, 30% up on this and almost double the asking price for the Yander Ferry Company. Cautious Charlie wasn't that cautious. But actually, no, he was pretty cautious. I tell a lie. He's got 320 cash left, which means he paid 80 for the Chinese River Ferry Company and the Kaiping Railway, which is actually the face value. Um, got the Kaiping for five because no one wanted it. I, I think it's junk. Um, well, everyone thinks it's junk. Um, and paid 75 for the Chinese rivers, which again pays out some income but doesn't do a lot for you. That 
that that 20 off the price of laying track in rivers is pretty situational. Um, pay up Pamela got the Taiwan Western line, which adds 20 to the value of Taiwan. I picked that up for mm, quite a lot, I think. I think that went for like 75 or something really high like that. One, two, three. Yeah, she's got 325 left. 75 for that Taiwan Western line, but she reckons, well, she's hoping obviously to open a railroad that can get her into Taiwan early in the game and make some money back on it plus the 15 that it pays out. And over here, Reckless Rachel actually bid up, um, was second bidder on a lot of the other things, kept pushing the price up and pushing the price up, but didn't win anything, um, just paid um five for the Wu Song. Oh no she didn't. She actually paid twenty-five I think for the Wu Song Railway. You know, face value of five but paid twenty-five for it. So you know a, a, a very high markup on that. Um but didn't win anything else. So where I'm up to now is choosing private investors. Um trainer Tony is first to go and if we look at his situation on the map he's going to be opening the Bao Cheng Railway, which starts here, and he wants to hook it up to a private investor, and there seem to be two choices here, or two two primary ideas that he's looking at. The first would be to choose the um, French Indochina, the French uh, investors down here, number seven, link up with French Windows China, which is worth good money through the game, 30, 40, 50, 60, and, you know, use the French to try and to build out towards um, Bao Cheng, um, and hook up nice and early, get that, uh, get that cash come in and move on. Uh, so that's one plan. The second plan, um, and that, that, that's like an obvious plan, but and it might be good early money plan, and maybe that can get him into a winning position early on. Is it exciting me as a plan? I think I did it in game one, and does it excite me doing it again? Not really. The other plan is for him to pick these Belgian investors here, um, out of Taiwan. That city seems to be called. I can't pronounce that properly, but it looks like it's Taiwan. So what he could do is choose the Belgian investors, hook those up into Beijing so that he's so that they're making money out of a run into Beijing and then use them to build down towards Bao, um, Bao Cheng and hook them up a bit later, but actually then have a route paid for through these mountains that's running into Beijing. And meanwhile, perhaps try and hook up um, his railway, you know, down here maybe with French Indochina or over into um, Macau or, or Hong Kong or somewhere over into this corner and build himself a network between Beijing up here and the south um, and see if he can get a longer term uh, routes established so that as Beijing gets more and more valuable, He's um he's wired into it and he's not just put all his eggs into some sort of little regional railway down here um, that then doesn't pay him out later in the game. So I think he's going to choose Belgium um, as his private investor and look at that plan. And then I'm going to have to go around and see what kind of ideas that means the others can make about their um, prospects. Because um, obviously if... If um, Balance Bernie here with the ferry company sees um, Tony take the Belgians here, where well, he's then looking at starting this um, HKR railroad out of um, Shanghai, then what's he looking at? Maybe trying to hook it up to Hong Kong and getting a nice, a nice lucrative route down here between Shanghai and Hong Kong. So then... What does um, the ferry company um, uh, Cautious Charlie want to do 
and so on. So uh, I'm going to work through these decisions, uh, pick some private investors and uh, see where we go from there. Okay, 1880 here then from Double O Games. Um, the uh, first player, our first player here, Train Man Tony, did go for the Belgian investors. So sticking with his plan to start the um, BCR and try and hook it up via the Belgian investors to uh, Beijing and set himself up long term. He's got an ABC work permit. He's got a 20, he should have a 20% stake in that. Um, I, should, I need to sort out the uh, share certificates and I also need to put a share certificate from the BCR onto his um, foreign investor there. Um, <clears throat> but we're kind of underway. Uh, Bernie here, second player with the Yander Ferry Company, went for the British investors down here out of Hong Kong and is going to try and get some sort of coastal route between Hong Kong and Shanghai hooked up. And um, yeah, with the ferry company and the engineers, it's obviously looking, uh, the next thing they'll be doing is uh, opening, buying some 20% uh, stake in this for 200 at 100 per share and opening up this HKR railroad. And we get on to um, Cautious Charlie here with two sort of two private companies that don't really suggest doing anything much. He didn't like the look of the kind of mid board companies that are sort of sat nowhere uh, like this, this WHR Wuhan. Wunan, sorry, railway didn't look very exciting. This Xiang didn't look very exciting. This Lanzhou didn't look very exciting. No, this looked very exciting. Um, the BCR is going to start up, so we didn't really want to help it by opening up this coming railway. And oh, it didn't look. None of it looked very exciting to him. Um, so he went for the Russian investors and is actually hoping, hoping. Um, somehow to get uh, a carve up some sort of territory up here in the north to himself whether that's a good idea or not or whether piggybacking on other people's rails is a better thing to do is um, uh, yeah up for debate so uh, but he uh, he's cautious Charlie and he went for decided to go out on his own and try and make a go of the northern routes Pay up Pamela with the Taiwan line was down here in the south and that's another reason that Charlie went up north because he could see that the player after him with the Taiwan western line was going to want to be scrapping in this area and it looked like with the BCR and then someone over here the, there could be you could get blocked out down here. Um, Pay up Pamela decided that she wanted to try and do something with her Taiwan Western line and so she took the French investors here with the idea that she might start up this company here out of Nanchang try and get something going into Taiwan and then see if she can hook up out of French Indochina and get some early routes going there obviously that might clash with whatever the British and ferry company are trying to do um, so she may be out of luck and then Rachel here went was left with the last choice of investors really didn't know what to do couldn't come up with a plan but based on the fact that this looks quite strong she decided to pick the German investors and thought she might try and hook up again fairly quickly out of Beijing and piggyback on uh, whatever got hooked up down the coast through Shanghai um, so it's looking with a with a lot of money is perhaps looking to start a company of her own and invest in another one and try and um, and, and and then see how things uh, pan out. So now what I've got to do is firstly sort out the share certificates for the Bao Cheng and then go down and make some decisions about um, what shares these people are buying, whether they're starting companies. Um, and if so, at what price and um, with how much investment. Um, so that's my next thing to do. I'll crack on. OK, so after our first player opened up the Bao Cheng railway here with the Belgian investors, uh, our player here with the engineer's office and the Yander Ferry Company carried on with his plan. He had the British investors, so he opened the HKR railroad here out of Shanghai. <coughs> And then 
the uh, player three, Cautious Charlie, with the Russian investors, opened this Orange Jingha Railroad, which is coming north out of um, Beijing, up here. I've uh, lost my pencil, mm, so I've got a pointery thing. A bit annoying. Um, what have I done with it? Ah, there we go. So yeah, uh, the Jingha Railway opened out of Beijing here. <clears throat> and he's got the Russian investors which are based out of there. These all opened with a share price at 100 as you can see. 100, um, 100, 100, 100. So that's taken all the 100 spots and that's to capitalise them as much as they can because you get five shares worth of capital to begin with. So they're just trying to capitalise as much as possible and took 20% shares and that gives them a three phase work permit. So they've all taken A, B, C work permits. Same for the Jingha here. Then the um, payout Pamela, who's got the, um, the Taiwan line and the French investors so obviously wanted to hook up to their French investors here and wanted to connect to Taiwan as quickly as possible. So took this SCR Xichang Railway again at a share price of 100 to 20 percent ABC work permit. And what that meant was <clears throat> that there wasn't a 100 share price spot left. And so whatever Reckless Rachel was going to open up was not going to be at the 100 share price. And so um, decided to do something completely different. Um, I suppose she is, I partly I, I, gave, I took her name as a cue and said, well, she is Reckless Rachel, let's just do something completely different with her. So she took a 40% share of the Jinghu Railway. She paid 90% per share, so she put 360 in and got an extra 90 because you get five times as your capitalization. So she's got 450 in the Jinghu Railway. She has only got a phase A work permit because if you take a 40% share, you get one phase of building. Um, so this, she could crash and burn. Um, but she's got the German investors who can build track for her as well. And so her kind of thinking is that if she can just get this set up with track through this city here, across through this ferry into this port here and then down to her German investors, which will almost undoubtedly then be linked up into Shanghai and whatever else is built, she could end up with a very nice route and, um, uh, and not really need to build track for it because it could already be built for her. And she's also uh, looking at the fact that she's got a 40% stake and a 10% on her investor, which means that she's already reached the 50% share limit that will um, get her the rest of her corporate treasury the moment we hit the correct phase. So the moment we go into um, the phase B and a three train is bought, even though she won't be able to build track, she will get another big boost straight into her corporate treasury and be able to buy trains and so on. So whether that all works out for her remains to be seen. But it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a completely different game uh, to what the first four players have done. And that seemed to me a very worthwhile thing to do. So um, now we are going to go into, I think we're going to go into operating rounds now, starting with the... Russian investors. I think we do. No, we do the private companies first, um, so they get their income, and then we do the foreign investors in uh, number order. So the Russians will go first, Belgians, German, Germans over here, British, and the French last, and then we will go into our um, t um, into our company operating rounds in this order. Um, so yeah, just going to pick it up and I will come drop back into this when there are um, decisions to make that aren't, you know, fairly straightforward and obvious. So, for example, the Russian investors are clearly going to build some track out into the nearest city so they can start earning some money and, and so on with the British are going to build out into here 
and um, the French are going to build up towards here so they're going to build into this city and and so on so um, I will keep doing these sort of fairly obvious um, builds and track lays and so on until uh, and come back when we get something that that is a little bit more interesting as a decision. Here we are in 1880 then um, and we've got the uh, first sort of operating round done for everyone so um, first player train where Tony started the Bao Cheng um, he gets to lay two track tiles with that um, but that meant putting down his sort of home tile and connecting it up. He didn't get to make a run. No one got to make a run. Everyone's share price moved back. And he bought a two train. Um, uh, the player two balanced. Um, Bernie opened up this Hukun railway and started building out from Hong Kong with the British investors. The Jingha started building north out of Shanghai and built with the Russian investors. Um, the SCR laid a track tile to aim to hook up to Taiwan and built out a French Indochina. And the Jing Hu um, laid its um, uh, home tile for the German investors and built to the coast out of Shanghai. So all as we would expect. Everyone bought one two train for a hundred. Um, now... That may have been short-sighted of some people and the correct decision for others. So you have to buy a train if you've not got one on a, on a corporation. And everyone wants at least a train. Um, the question is whether some people should have invested in two or three to try and push the trains along. So um, one of the key sort of factors in this game which differentiates it from any of the other 18xx or any that I know of is that this train marker moves each time um, one of these corporations buys a train and then if you get through a whole turn i.e. you slide these out to the right and if you get through a whole turn and no one's bought a train that's when a you ditch all the tra the remaining trains of that type that are available and b trigger a share round so the operating round continues until no one till you get a turn where no one buys a train or the trains of a particular type run out and then that's what triggers um, share rounds where people can buy stock and sell stock and start new companies and so on so the first sort of interesting or or we're hitting an, a point now of interesting decisions because what's going to happen is the private company is going to operate then the foreign investors are going to lay some more track and operate and get some more money coming into their um, their companies um, but then what's going to happen is that each of the corporations um, starting with the Bao Cheng is going to have a decision as to whether to buy another train or another two trains and keep the um, current set of operating rounds going or whether they want to stop buying trains and try and force a share round um, and that's an interesting decision a big decision point for um, each of the players um, so we're going to do um, private company payouts and then um, uh, run the um, foreign investors, which is a fairly straightforward set of decisions. But then we do have this track lay run, but, all, but then a train purchase decision for the companies to see um, where the players um, are thinking about trying to trigger um, stock rounds or whether they're happy to um, continue with um, track lays and play as we are so um, yeah that's where I'm up to okay here we are in 1880 we're still in operating rounds we've just done another set of payouts for the private in, um, companies and then the foreign investors have acted and what happened in uh, that round is that down here the Jinghu railway run by reckless Rachel hooked up with its German investors she took the cash out of the German investors, she took their free, uh, she replaced their token with one of hers and she'd also bought another two train and is now set up to run pretty profitably at the moment and with a 50% holding so that if she chooses to pay out she's actually getting a good, good amount of the cash rather than these people just holding 20% where a payout gets you virtually nothing. It does move your share price forward but it doesn't actually make you much cash. 
so um, that's interesting. And sh and actually, sh um, Rachel, Reckless Rachel, is now um, looking at the possibility of buying another two train this turn because she can use it given her setup here. So she could run a two train out of here, she could run a two train north there and a two train south there and, and actually make use of all those two trains and then have decisions to make as to whether to pocket the cash or um, or whether to pile some into the company so that it then has enough reserves um, to look at one of the big trains. The, the thing is that she's also got 50% sold so that when we get um, when we get to the point of um, uh, full capitalization, which is when the th um, three trains come out, um, she's going to get another 450 injection into her company. So probably doesn't need to withhold the cash and can just run and try and make some money now. Um, so that's the situation with her. So going down the other companies then, um, Train Mad Tony did not buy another two train. Um, doesn't want a two train, his, um, the, the train layout and the BCR doesn't really favour a two train, wants one of these two plus twos or three plus threes to make use of the dots and will come into the city so we'll have dot city, dot city, town city, town city and a two plus two would be a much better train for him to have given his rail. Um, so doesn't want to be pushing the trains, uh, to be filling his portfolio up with um, two trains. Um, here the Hukun did buy another train and that's probably optimal for them given that they can run um, north and south out of sh um, Shanghai and south this way but aren't going to really able, be able to get much more than that and, the, and the, they're currently cut off from building through this hex here so and joining up with their British investors so that route is going to have to wait until the green tiles have become available so doesn't want to buy a train. JHA is just slowly building um, northwards. Cautious Charlie doesn't have much of a plan. But again, needs green tiles to join um, rails together. Um, doesn't want to buy a train again because the combination of, of towns and cities makes the two plus twos much more favourable up there or three plus threes than the twos, threes and four trains. Again, doesn't want to clog his portfolio up with useless two trains, even though pushing the trains on is often a good idea in this game because it controls when the because it just keeps your operating rounds going forever. Um, not sure that's the greatest move. Over here, the SCR has absolutely no use for a, um, a train at all, actually, until they can get green tiles out. Again, doesn't want to, um, doesn't want. Uh, um, to be buying more trains to keep the operating rounds running. So um, the GAHU, Reckless Rachel, is in exactly the opposite situation. You know, the the, um, the trains coming to an end and being moved on to the 2 plus 2s and a share round happening would favour all four of the other players and therefore isn't in her best interest at all. So as we go down the line, we're going to see these people operating and not really able to do much. The HKR is in an OK position with two trains and able to make some income. And actually the SCR, because of the Taiwan, was making eight per share. So isn't doing horribly. Um, but the Bao Cheng and the JHA are pretty much um, flatlining at the moment. And um, Reckless Rachel wants to make the best of that by, um, and will probably uh, buy another train um, to keep things uh, ticking on for as long as she can and keep money coming in for as long as she can. Um, so that's uh, the latest situation. Uh, I'm now going to do um, operating rounds for each of the companies starting down here. And uh, then we will uh, see how much more of this we're going to get before uh, we get into a share round. At some point we will have to run out of two trains, but I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but there's still three left and I don't think three are going to sell. Um, the question will be whether Reckless Rachel thinks it's buying worth buying four of them. Um, that would be just to keep things going again and that will be an interesting decision too, but I won't try and think about it now. 
well, as you can see, the GHU did buy that two plus two train, that two train, they've now got three two trains, um, and the reasoning was pretty simple. Firstly, to keep the operating rounds going, um, that two train can push um, the GHU's income up to 110, so it'll cover the cost of the train if they want to take their cash into the company. Um, but they may just want to pay it out. Um, but also because if they don't buy the two train, then the next train's coming out. Well, then the two, the rest of the twos will go, and the two plus twos will come out. And in this situation, everything that the JHU is hitting is big cities um, and not small towns. So the two plus twos are useless to it, um, and very useful to other people. So um, keeping the two plus twos out of people's hands as long as possible, and just trying to keep the twos in play. Um, is exactly what um, Reckless Rachel wants, even though having three two trains um, seems a bit, well, it's not crazy. I know there are uh, 18xx players who would happily buy four two trains into a company and just try and ram in as much um, income as possible and and uh, work out what to do next when, when that happened, having made as much cash as possible. So... Um, it's uh, not the most out there play and it seems very sensible um, whether she wants to buy a fourth two train I don't think that does look quite as appealing because firstly there's no way to use it and secondly she's got 230 remaining capital if you add 450 for fully capitalizing the company that looks like it'll pay for something nice up here like a four plus four or one of these six trains which would be really good for her with the runs that the JHU has got wants to be able to afford that six when it comes round or and you know and will have to replace the twos once they get rusted by something um, and so wants to be able to capitalize the company up to around the 900 mark to buy a four and then maybe a six something like that so doesn't want to be stripping absolutely all the cash out of it and may well may well put some of the next the next run into the company treasury to make sure that the the jhu has a a sort of long-term future so um, that's where we're at, but we're now round on another round of the private companies operating and the foreign investors operating. And then we'll be back to the Bao Cheng and the Hukun, the Jingha and the Xi Chang. And I think then we are going to hit a uh, share round. You can see the payouts over here, the, the, the um, payouts per share four for the Bao Cheng and the JHA, like I was, the Jingha, like I was saying, they're doing very poorly. The Hukun um, 8 with its two trains and the um, Xi, Xi Chang also on 8 by virtue of the um, Taiwan Western line being hooked up. And uh, the, um, the HKR on 10 uh, thanks to the ability to run trains north and south with the, with the ferry company. Um, uh, that was an eight though with the two with the um, JHU running two trains now that it's got three two trains it'll it'll fire up to about 11 I reckon um, anyway back to the private company payouts and some more um, foreign investor um, track laying and um, capital accumulation and as you can see while we're on the subject some of these um some of these foreign investors now have got quite big pots of money in them that will go into that can be either skimmed into the personal treasuries or at 20 percent or all dumped into the company treasuries so there's you know there's 60 here and the belgians the british have got close to 190 there the russians have got 120 the french have got 120 and of course the jinghu's hooked up with the belgians so there are these pots of money you get a 50 yen bonus for um um for hooking up your your first company with your foreign investor um and and you get the the share as well some of these can't happen um because they need green tiles to actually make the the track lays so they're they're not going to happen before the share round but so they're building up these big pots of cash that will will flood into the company treasury or could flood into the company treasury or be skimmed off um as is their want later in the game
Okay, so I'm um, in the foreign investors phase. The Bao Chang being run by Train Mad Tony hooked up with the Belgian investors south of Beijing. That allowed him to put some extra capital into the company. It allowed him to take a 50 bonus that I don't think I paid him. So I'm going to have to rethink what just happened. Um, no, I didn't give him the 50 bonus. And that's quite important for him because he just paid out with the with the S, with the BCR when he wouldn't have done he'd have kept the money in the treasury because what he has just done is bought the last two of the two trains because hooking up with the foreign investor allowed him to uh, token here right south of, of Beijing which is a great spot for him and now again um, a bit like the um, JHU two trains allow him to run um, very profitably um, from uh, from his bases north and south into Beijing, south of Beijing and out of here. And the 2 plus 2s don't do him much good and they're 180 instead of 100 so the two trains are better for him right now. Um, but I just paid out so that he had another cash to capitalise a company because his other plan is because he's got the because um, he's got the share uh, priority uh, token he can just start this um, this um, Ningxi railway here without really affecting his income from the BCR and he's got the rail all set up so he can try and double up the income coming out of, of the track that he's already laid um, so his plan is to have enough money to capitalize that at 90 and buy as much of it as he can which is why the 50 bonus is um, super important to him here uh, but I'm just gonna have to fiddle around because um, I did a payout, um, which I didn't need to do if he gets that 50 bonus, and I'd rather have the money capitalised in this on the BCR because it's a bit short of cash now, having just spent 200 on trains. Um, so my plan uh, is just to um, do that and then finish this sec segment of footage because I'm going to go into a share round and this is an actual cutoff point. So I'm going to sort that out, but um, I'll do it off camera and the next time I come back it'll be um, with a share round.